This is an ABS box which I use to contain the controller for my plastic injection moulding machines. Uh, they're nice boxes, they're st sturdily made, they're the right proportions for what I need, but they're very easily scratched, so that's one thing. The other thing is that they're um, quite difficult to make accurate holes in, and I've made a previous video about that. Um, the combination of that difficulty and um, the ease with which the box is scratched makes it particularly difficult um, to solve the problem. It's one I've lived with for a while, but I've recently solved it very substantially with this, which is um, a cutting jig. It's a 3D printed piece of plastic, and it contains two holes. One which is measured to contain a PID controller, so that's the right size for that. And then the other thing The other thing is the power socket, which just fits in there. Now, of course, the idea is not that these things go in these holes, but these holes are duplicated on the box. So we'll, we'll mark this out. Watching out for parallax errors. Make sure we're right up into the corner. So without me I used to do it by measuring to the centre line, um, projecting out on either side, it's error prone, not least because these corners are slightly rounded and getting a caliper exactly on the edge is difficult. It's a rounded corner, so you'd put a shim in there of known width and then do adding and subtracting. And as you can see along this side of the box, there's very little material so you don't have much time to make mistakes. So anyway, there's a perfectly scratched cutting line and that would take oh, 15 minutes of work to mark out previously now it's as you saw the work of a moment but it doesn't stop there if I continue to work on this hole I'm going to damage the box so another function for this drilling jig or cutting jig hole making jig is that it protects the side of the box so when I'm working in here I'm not um, damaging the box so what I'll do is use uh, the Dremel to cut away and we'll see what happens. get used to this because of the way the turn the tool turns it's either trying to dig into the jig or trying to come away from the jig I prefer it to try and come away from the jig beautiful and then we need to put um, at the other hole on the other end which is the back of the machine so I'll turn it round put it back in the bag to uh, give it protection from scratches I used to tape this all up with masking tape and then that would get all gunked up so you'd have to clean it with a solvent and just so much work now this jig, you need to orient this correctly, so this is the front of the machine, this is the outside, the left hand side of the machine, the, the main socket goes on the bottom, so we put that there, hole is there, main socket's there, don't get that wrong, it's quite boring, I'm guessing. <coughs> okay, same process, mark it. Again, I can't stress how much quicker that is, it's marked, it's guaranteed to be absolutely bang on correct. Yeah, doing what I just did there, the old way, 
is a huge deal. Well, it's 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 twenty minutes work, and it was twenty seconds work there. So, a very worthwhile improvement. Okay, let's do the second hole. Let's not make it that one. It's this one we're cutting this time. It's done. Oops. Just like that. Let's take a look at the jig after one use. A couple of dings here. One here. I think it's good for at least another use and perhaps several more. If I had a CNC uh, metal cutting router um, then I would use that to uh, make this plate um, but I don't so we've got a way forward that's easy to implement inexpensive very important for me um, and effective so the customer gets a good a good result I get a reasonable reasonably comfortable manufacturing step job done